when you pivot in focus and you pivot in how you utilize your energy, um, people fizzle out so quickly. Oh, yeah. So quickly. I I don't have, I mean, especially being in Vegas, like I'm sure you know, being the in part, Vegas. Yeah. yeah. People are into like, you know, and there's no shade to anybody who no likes shade, to do that. Yeah. Like if you're listening. I've been there. Like, <laughs> yeah. If you're listening and you like to do that, like all, like go off. But, but <laughs> what what I've noticed is when I start to say no using my full sentence no, um, so many people fizzled out because there's nothing else that we could do together. And I know that there's, um, yeah, like us, like I love that we got to connect because we got to, I got to really see what it means to uh, be in in alignment with what you're personally doing. And then knowing that someone else is also in their conviction and their devotion to their own purpose and Mm -hmm. having separate paths. And we're just kind of holding each other's hand and walking each other home. I think we come across with people who, um, may not know their purpose and it gets a little tricky and hard to feel like you're separate from them or or not separate but have you have your own identity and you're you're soul searching and so mm-hmm. um I know we talked about this before where we had friendships that it felt a little bit like uh confusing to be around meshed energies and that's that people pleaser mentality too. Yes, 100% that people pleaser mentality and with friendships We don't really talk about it enough about how it's okay to, you know, sometimes like there comes an ending with friendships and Mm. it never is like bad blood, Mm. but like you guys are just walking different paths now. And Mm. even with that too, I even feel like certain friendship breakups there's always such big lessons in that. Mm. It definitely showed me like, wow, this is how I was definitely like a big people pleasing in in this friendship where I was not honoring. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And- what, did it, what does it feel like for anybody who's maybe struggling right now in a friendship? What does it feel like when you are absolutely not honoring your yourself? Ooh, that's a good question. When you're not honoring yourself and I feel like one thing when realizing certain things, it's like discernment. Mm. Like discernment of like, is this, fr- do I feel fulfilled? Like how do I feel after? Because mm. I've, I've noticed in the past with certain friendships where we would hang out. But I wouldn't feel fulfilled. Mm, like you felt drained. I felt drained. Mm. Yeah. And there would be times um, where I would want to do wholesome things with my friends mm. um, and not the party scene. Like I've always been wanting to um, like do kind of like um, women's circles. And I remember this download came because I was thinking like, I don't. I don't want to go out and drink. I want to connect differently with my friends. I want to do wholesome bonding (laughs) things with my friends. Maybe I can host a friendship circle. And like um, I got this like um, cold plunge tub and like I have this hand pan drum and I wanted to do this whole like fun little thing. But no no one was like really down for oh, it like no. do we have to do the cold plunge part or like oh my gosh you know and it i i would you know i'll you come have, i know how come <laughs> i'll come i'll come over and, and do a cold plunge with oh you God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so like you know and then it started to i just had to make peace that yeah okay, I'm taking inventory that, okay, now that I'm doing the healing and the work and realizing my intuition or my, my, what my body is feeling, how's my body feeling after this hangout? You know, I want to, I want to feel inspired. How can we like uplift each other? I don't, I don't, I'm not much like of a big gossiper person either. So I had to take inventory of just like, you know, like even my own shadow self, like, yes. oh, mm. wow, I just spent my time like, like spilling some tea or whatever. Like, and now I, I'm leaving feeling like, Meh. yeah, you know? yes, yes. And I know that feeling all too well, too. Yeah. It's really hard to transition out. And I think this comes with everything to transition out of old versions of yourself. And we can talk about um, our past versions too. I want to. Oh my I wanna god! Know. Yes. I want to know your past <laughs> versions, but I, I, I definitely. Know all. Yes, I definitely resonate with you know being able to mourn 
letting go of the friendship and also allowing space for like a, an upgraded version of that friendship maybe to yes. rekindle or reconnect. And you know, if we want to hold on to things and not let the energy flow, our actual chi flow, mm. we create these blockages and create constriction and create resentment and create judgment. And then, you know, instead of focusing on, this is something that I actually had to learn was instead of focusing on trying to fix people, just let go. Yes. Just let go, accept. And it's not about changing people. It's about changing your focus. Yeah, that's so good. I can resonate so much with what you just said. And it's it's like at the end of the day, it's all love, mm -hmm. you know? And it's like, you want to come on this train with me? Yeah. You know, sometimes we need that space apart, you know, for things to also come together. Yes. So yeah. I, lo I love your take on that. What's a version of you? Maybe we can talk about like your teenage self. Oh my God. Yes. Child. Let's talk about it all. Yes. Girl, I am a beautiful mess. Work <laughs> in progress. We still healing. <laughs> yes. We are still healing. Never ending. I would love to know if you can give us a picture of yeah. baby Mary. What are some things looking back now as a past version of you? Things that you've learned um, and have taken in. Like what are the separate differences? Give me a full picture of your past self um, before becoming aware, before getting into healing and, you know, generational trauma. And mm. what does that look like compared to now? So good. So, so, so good. So I know I told you earlier that the reason why I moved to Vegas was because I got my tongue pierced mm. at the age of 12. Who was I to get crazy, <laughs> crazy girl? Always. I was just a rebel, a rebel with the cause, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I would say, yeah, my preteen years, I've always been because I didn't know what healing looked like or doing the, um, what trauma and like doing the, the shadow work was like, it like spilled out into like promiscuous, prom Per, how do you say it again? Ooh, a promiscuity? promiscuity? Yeah. Per, per, being promiscuous. Yeah. Yeah. Being promiscuous because all I wanted to feel was loved, you know, looking mm. love outside of me um, instead of knowing that love has always been within me coming back home to just like, yeah, coming back home home to our own worthiness. Mm. Um, 